Amen. The last day of 2020. And if you're not grateful, I'll be grateful for you that Amen. you're still alive today and you've made it here into this place. You, you may be watching online. I'm, I'll stand here grateful for you that you're able to log in to this evening's New Year's service as we prepare to say goodbye to Amen. 2020. Amen. Amen. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye to everything that we've suffered through Jesus. this year. This year as we Hallelujah. reach forward towards 2020. Yeah. My scripture this evening comes from Philippians 3, 13 through 14. It says, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And I just got to read that again in an NLT version. It kind of makes that a little bit yeah. more clear. It says, no, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it. But I focus on the one thing, forgetting the past. Today is a day to forget the past. Looking forward to what lies ahead at midnight. I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize, which God through Christ Jesus is calling us. So, Father, I thank you. I thank you for those that have come, those that have survived. So many lives have been lost this year, Father. But I'm so grateful, Father, that my family is alive today. I'm, I'm grateful for my new life family that's in the house, that's, that's watching online. I'm so grateful, Father, for those that are still alive this day, Father. Those that you will allow to see a new year. I thank you, Father, for what you're going to do in 2021. I thank you that this year is coming to an end. I thank you, Father, and I, I pray for a change in this nation. A change, Father. I pray for a united nation that's called the United States. Let's make it truly united in one cause. Only you, Father. Only you can unite us like the way we should be like you called us to be, one nation under God. So I pray for this nation, Father, as, as we begin to prepare for our service, we prepare to turn it over to the hands of Minister Sherwood and the praise team. I'm just filled with the spirit of gratefulness, Father, that I made it to the house today. Gratefulness. Grateful we can see this year go by. Yeah. So I thank you, Father, for these things. In the awesome and mighty name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. To the hands Amen. of the Amen. Hallelujah. How appropriate, Deacon Johnson. Simple of a song says, we're grateful for the things you've done. All year long, we've had some good. We've had some bad. <laughs> There's one songwriter that says that all the bad, all the good, I weigh the bad. Ain't that right? And for that, we're so grateful today. Hear us, Lord. Hear us as we offer these praises up unto you tonight. In 2020, the last. Lord, listen. I am grateful for the things that you have done. Yes, I Oh, 
from your heart this, this evening. Hardly oh, if they be here, if they flow in my heart, if they flow. Testimony. Come on, sing it. Say, I am thankful for the things that you have done. Come on, sing it. Come on, sing it. Thank you. 
I hear you, kid. Amen. Hallelujah. Good evening, New Life Christian Fellowship. We bring you tonight greetings from our house, from our church, all of you who are watching us via Facebook, all of you who are here, who count it not robbery to sacrifice to come and to this place to hear New Life's 2020 Action News Update. God has brought us through a lot through 2020 and we are grateful. And by singing that song, that gave us an opportunity to just say how grateful we are. Yeah. And as we give thanks, we're going to talk about it, just share with you some updates of some things that we have accomplished in this house. Yeah. In the area of education, graduation, we have our sister Valea, who graduated with her associate's degree and was accepted into the University of South Florida and the University of Central Florida at the same time, graduating pending her acceptance into nursing school. We can give her a clap. That's a news update. That's a good news. All the things that went on in this year, that's one of the good news stories. In the area of our military service and those who were time has spent time away, we want to give credit and say a shout out to Brother Philip Darns, specialist, who is currently serving active duty in the United States Army and Qatar. Shout out to Philip and to Christina. She departed us and she's also still serving overseas in Qatar, and she's still remaining connected to this body as a Watch Care member. We also would like to thank God for bringing Sister Fatima home after serving overseas for this year in this time. And also we thank God that he brought Sister LaJoyce home this summer as well. Those serving. In our next area, we have really been celebrating new jobs, promotions, pay increases, new cars, new homes, moved into new homes. And we just want to recap some of those things that we've been blessed with just on this year. Sister Tamikia Miller-Scott, Sister Charity Powell, Sister Felicia Darns, all got new jobs with financial increases in 2020. <laughs> Sister Eloise got a new home, and Sister Minnie and Tierra and Brother Chris Jr. moved out into their own place. So we thank and praise God for that opportunity that he Hallelujah. did in this house. Now, all those who got cars in this COVID crisis, in this time, those individuals, our Bishop Register got a new car. Right. Deacon Chris got two new cars. Right. Sister Celeste got a new car. Yeah. Charity got a new car. Silas got a new car. Valeria got a new car. And Minister T got a new car all in 2020. In our area of our social outreach, we want to give recognition to our children's department as they gave through this year back to school bags and book bags and backpacks and supplies that even through this COVID crisis, we still were able to bless the children of the house of God with back to school supplies and they've done mail outs with Bible studies and lessons to still evangelize and reach the children of this house in our social outreach program. In the area of our WOW ministry, we continue to serve and have fellowship via Zoom, virtual. We still had our Bible lessons and still continue to bond in the spirit of love. We have celebrated our women's conference. We gave diaper drive to Metropolitan Ministries. And we had a top it off with a secret sister Santa that was explosive as we gave to one another in celebration of what God did for us in 2020. Let's give it up for the women of the world. And this 
year, we were also able to bless some families. As you know, this year we went through a lot of challenges and financial challenges and food. And so our own, very own Minister T was able to be instrumental in leading our New Life Food Giveaway Drive, where we blessed many families in this house in spite of another area in our social outreach ministry is we want to also recognize Professor Titi for opening her home to two young ladies to give them better opportunity. And we give her for being that for those young ladies. We also recognize Sister Chantel who spearheaded our 2020 Pastor's Anniversary Drive Up Service Outdoor. We had a marvelous time. We give a shout out to our sister Michelle Nichols, our first real live virtual member who has committed to serving in New Life Christian Fellowship and she is continuously being on our prayer call and we lift up our first virtual member in this COVID crisis, sister Michelle Nichols who lives in Fort Lauderdale. In the area of marriages, births and milestones, we would love to celebrate our newlywed couple, Sister Cynthia and Brother Elmer Mitchell were united in marriage in 2020. And for our seniors, Mother V, Mother Bernadine, she celebrated her 75th birthday this year. Isn't God amazing? Now that's some action news. Now, we may not know and recognize this, but we did have a COVID baby born, not with the disease of COVID, but during this crisis. And so we want to give a shout out to Sister Ramona Singleton, who gave birth to Omar Nair Johns, born November 13th, 2020. He weighed five pounds and eight ounces, a beautiful baby boy, our first son in 2020 from this house. There are, we have so many things to be celebrated, but we can't go without even thinking and reflecting on those that we did lose during this year. And so we just pause momentarily as we reflect on the loss of our dear sister, Mary Dew, and our dear brother, our pastor's son, Robert Larry. May God bless them and keep them even in their absence from us. God has been so good to us in 2020, and if you've ever had an opportunity to get on the prayer line, we would encourage you to get on that prayer line. You would be so encouraged and so enriched because we've had some tremendous experiences in the health and healing department of New Life Christian Fellowship during this COVID time. We have Sister Herminia and Herminia Gonzalez and Denise Hawkins who beat cancer and were survivors this year. Despite of what we went through, they're survivors and we give a shout out to them. We have Tamikia Miller Scott, Sister Valea and Sister Amber Hurd who beat COVID-19 and they're walking, they're ministering, they're back in their jobs, they're doing, they're in their homes and they're thriving. We also had, sister, those, we had a few that were hospitalized and experienced and procedures and surgeries during this time. And we thank God that they're still here with us and, and, and in spirit. We had Sister Gigi and Minister Carla and Sister Tamika Johnson and Sister Anna and Brother William, Elder William Hall and Little Aubrey and Sister JC and Sister Scylla and Brother Pete hospitalized. And I'm sure there may be some that we may have missed but all those still survive through those times in this time. And Brother Marty, who's still waiting for his kidney transplant, still surviving. So we had some excellent things that happened to us this year. And if this may not be everything, and we may have missed something, so if you have a good news story to tell, or you have something that you'd like to share, feel free to contact us at www.tampanewlife.com and let one of our representatives know your good story. This ends our nightly New Life Action News 2020.
jump that off at that particular time. And we know you're excited to be here. Yes, yes. And so we want to, as we have given to you, we want you to have an opportunity to give back into the house of the Lord. So at this time, if you have something to give and you'd like to give a donation to keep this house working and keep this house running, we are going to be preparing for our offering at this particular time before we have our next special feature of our program. Thank you. Stretch your hands towards the orphan basket. And those of you that are that are tuning in virtually, stretch your hands towards this basket and begin to begin to consciously realize what you're doing. You're going to give online. You're going to give by check. Father, we thank you for the free will of the free will offering. The free will offering of your people. They were not coerced. They were not given a set amount. We just ask them to reflect on the fact that 364 and a half days have gone by. You fed us. You kept us from danger seen and unseen. Some are no longer with us, but good God Almighty, we're still here and thankful. So as we end this year, we end it on the right note. We give, and it shall be given unto us in good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and run it over. And he will cause men 
governments, nations to give unto your blessing. We thank you. We honor you in the name that's above all names. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Somebody say amen. amen. Thank you, dear. sensory prayer portion because of the open door that Minister Carla left. I just want to make one more acknowledgement in the way of something powerful that God did in 2020. And I'm doing this because I spoke with Sister Heidi on this evening and she gave me permission to do so. And then we have our dear friends and beloved brother and sister of this ministry, Brother Larry and Sister Kimberly. They wanted to come in serving and working, and they wanted to adopt a family for Christmas. And Sister Heidi and her daughter Jade and Melina, they were adopted for Christmas, amen. And she said that her children had such huge smiles, amen. So it's always not, it's not the ones that you might necessarily think is doing something in ministry, but it's those things that you do in secret that God will reward you openly. And Larry and Kimberly had no idea that I was going to say this on tonight. But we just want to thank God for the Jesus in you that you spread in the love of Jesus. Because that's truly what Christmas is all about. So on behalf of Sister Heidi and Melina and Jade, God bless you both. Amen. Praise the Lord. At this time, as we reflect on intercessory prayer that God ordained at 6 a.m. starting on October 1st of 2020. None of us knew, including me, what God was truly up all to. All right. Amen. But we give him all the glory. We don't want to steal any of his glory right, because right. it's all his. Mm -hmm. And if you have been on at least one of those prayer calls, you would sense the presence of God. You would see how your brothers and sisters are growing in Christ. Amen. It sets a, an opportunity for our bishop to minister to us on a whole different level. Amen. There are some places of intimacy that we can go spiritually with our bishop through what he breathes into us on those calls. So if you have not had the opportunity, I admonish you to just take the opportunity to be a part come not expecting anything but just for God to just do whatever he wants to do. Amen. Because he has been doing just that. So at this time we're going to just share just some snippets of some prayers. Amen. That your brothers and sisters are praying before the Lord. And God is moving in a mighty, mighty way. We will first have a prayer by Brother Elmer Mitchell. He is the husband
us love every day. When we call you Jesus, whether it's in talk or prayer, you answer. Maybe we don't get an answer we wanted, but it was what we needed. Lord God, every promise you said you would do, you did fulfill. Thank you, Lord, and please help us keep our word to you and neighbors by renewing our minds. Lord, thank you for that. Thank you for your protection of all your guidance, strength. Thank you for our family's protection. Thank you for watching over us through the year. January up until December 2020. Sometimes the enemy calls things to give fear, but with your love and our faith, we make it through bad times and situations. Lord God, thank you for Jesus' sacrifice for our sins, the shedding of his blood for all Lord, and sacrifice is hard. I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the light of what David is saying is he contemplates what God has done for him, also what he can give back to God. And we all know that we can never repay God even to the amount of anything that we do because he has done it all for us. Let us pray. Eternal and most of precious God, we come before you, thanking you for your love, first of all, your grace and your mercy. We want to thank you, O God, for you giving yourself for us, dying on the cross so that we can live. We thank you for all the gifts, everything that you have given us. And Father, we know that we can never repay what you have done for us. But we say thank you and we are grateful. We ask that you would give us faith to keep trusting in you until the very end. And God, we know that you would help us because you have destined us to come to the destiny that you have prepared for us. We thank you for everything that you are doing, everything that you have already done, and everything that you are about to do. But as we move into the new year, we ask that you would give us guidance. And Lord, help us that we would be better people than we were in 220. We give you thanks and we give you praise. We worship you. We give you all the glory because we are who we are only because of you. Hallelujah. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Sister Amber Hurts. Second Corinthians 5 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Lord, we thank you for allowing us to see another year, dear Heavenly Father. 
throughout this year, many things have changed, dear Heavenly Father. So many things have changed, but dear God, above all, you have remained constant. And for that, we say thank you. Lord, I thank you for the silence that you have created, dear Heavenly Father, by bringing this pandemic so that I can hear you, so that I can hear you clearly, God, and that I can put my focus in you. Throughout this year, Lord, we have suffered many losses, Lord. Losses in all areas, dear Heavenly Father. Losses of loved ones, dear Heavenly Father. Losses my of God, jobs. God. Losses of finances. Losses of relationships, losses of sanity, dear Heavenly Father. But through it all, you have been there. You have been there walking alongside of us, dear Heavenly Father. You have been there wiping our tears, dear Heavenly Father. You have been there diminishing all of our fears, dear Heavenly Father, and giving us the strength that we have needed to endure. Dear Heavenly Father, you've been in that hospital room, dear Heavenly Father, with the people who've been on their sick beds, dear Heavenly Father. You've been with those parents who've been at home trying to do for their kids, dear Heavenly Father. You've been with those people who've lost their jobs, dear Heavenly Father, and have just been looking to you for help in any area that it may be, dear Heavenly Father. Finances, or whatever it may be, dear Heavenly Father, you have been there through it all and for that we say thank you dear heavenly father thank you for supplying our every need dear heavenly father even though we didn't know where it was going to come or where it was going to come from we know that you are on time god and everything works in your time and dear heavenly father and for that we say thank you we say thank you for waking up this morning, dear Heavenly Father, for walking into this new year, dear Heavenly Father, with breath in our lungs, dear Heavenly Father, and just being able to see a new day, dear Heavenly Father, being able to see a new year, because we know that that was not the fate of everybody, dear Heavenly Father. Not everybody made it to see this new year, dear Heavenly Father, but you saw it fit. And because you did, Lord, we're going to say thank you for that. We're going to praise you, dear Heavenly Father, and we're going to walk into this new place of strength with the renewed spirit, dear Heavenly Father. We are praying for renewal in our in our faith, dear Heavenly Father. Renewal in our spirit, dear Heavenly Father. Renewal for a thirst. After your word, dear Heavenly Father, allow us to be different, allow us to be set apart, allow us to be examples, dear Heavenly Father, in this new year. Let our light shine, let our purpose in you be defined. Dear Heavenly Father, I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for this will be the year of transformation. You've already begun a transformation in our lives, dear Heavenly Father. You've been allowing us to come to other day, Heavenly Father, to pray and to intercede on others, the Heavenly Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your presence today. And all of these things I ask in your mighty name. Amen. Yes, Lord, in your mighty name, God, we thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
being in church tonight, is it? I said, is anything wrong with being in church tonight? hold up our prayers. This will hold up God from forgiving us. So at this time, we will have a prayer from our first official virtual member, Sister Michelle Nichols.
our worship be the hand and give them a, fan, a fantabulous drop on the air. I'm just something, I'm just some incredibly unusual circumstances. I came out early, I had a, a festive outfit on, but I would almost be tone deaf to stay in that outfit when people are dying. I'm festive, I am. But in reality, I know that, that the fight still goes on, the pandemic ain't going nowhere. In fact, listen to me, as, as, as the psalmist says that it's, it's going to get darker before the day comes. They've already said that the worst has not come. So we need to prepare for the worst. How many, how many hear what I'm saying? That means you've got to suck some stuff up. You have to put your big boy pants on, your big girl pants on, and we got to get through this pandemic. I, uh, one of my schoolmates, I'm not going to mention their name or their gender. I was alerted that the person was in an induced coma. That COVID has wiped out some people. And the assignment, uh, one of the assignments I think that 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 deadly disease he has is to destroy the, the age. Kill off all the old people. The young folk ain't got nobody come to get no counsel from. If you are someone that admires David's life, when Absalom attempted to take over the kingdom, one of the first mistakes he made was who he assembled around him. He got a, a bunch of inexperienced leaders to give him counsel. And they always gave him the wrong counsel. So one of the, I think the, the one of the attacks of the this this pandemic is to kill off the old. That's what it's doing. So for those of you that, that still have people that are 65 and older, 50, whatever, and you're young, I'm I'm imploring you. Be very careful who you're around. Be very careful. Monitor who comes and goes from your your space because you could be bringing a disease back to your home and not even know it. That's how most people are caught it. They caught it from somebody else. That I, I have a witness in here. It's not somebody I tag you, you tag me. It's, it's in the atmosphere. So I, I admonish you to continue to practice social distancing, wear your mask. I've learned to work around it. Amen. Has anybody learned to work through this? Yeah. Amen. That's why we need to close tonight because you, you've got to be able to manage and navigate through this pandemic and still get the job done. Hallelujah. There's two songs I want to hear. One, Hallelujah, and uh, the one by uh, Myron Butler. You know what I'm talking about? All Things Well. All Things Well, but the other, the old song, that old worship song. Let me see. I might have it. Not that one. That's the second song. The first one is the old hymn. Let me see. Hallelujah. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Anybody feel like giving worship this 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 day, the last day of the year? Anybody feel like giving him honor and worship? Ain't my thankful in spite of what, what you miss, what you lost, what happened to you. Are you still thankful? You're going out the right way. Hallelujah. So we'll say this. Hallelujah. Highest praise.
some things well. I wish I had somebody to testify in it with me. Anybody believe by faith he's making some things well?
you got to look at your situation and say, all things. Back in the corner and say, all things. All things. Back in the corner and say, all things. Your money funny. Relationships upset, upside down. He does all things. Scream at it. Scream at it. believe it. He does. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, it doesn't seem like it's been a year, has it? Doesn't seem like it. Doesn't seem like a year has gone by. It just went by. But for those that have lost their lives, those that have lost loved ones, this has been a, a traumatic, to say the least, year. Let, let's do our confession. We'll be about this business. Someone say, this is the word of God. This is my word from God. Obedience to this word is the only weapon that I have. If I read this word and do exactly as it says, according to the book of Joshua, chapter number one, I shall prosper. You want to prosper, don't you? I shall prosper in every area of my life. I can be what this word says I can be. I can do what this word says I can do. Thank you, Father, for revealing your word. Amen. Turn me quickly to Jeremiah chapter 12. We're looking at verse 1 through 5. And it's customary. We always want to give a message that kind of gets us prepared for what's coming and gets us prepared to embrace all the, the opportunities and the doors that will open for us. And uh, just want to share a testimony. If you, uh, some of you know, uh, I have been going through some health issues. They didn't know really what was going on with me. I lost a tremendous amount of weight. I think I was at 220. I'm down to about 180. That's a concern about weight. And so they started doing tests. Uh, I had a low hemoglobin level. They gave me an iron infusion. That helped out some. But the, they saw some uh, some irregular, irregularities on my pancreas, my kidney, and my liver. So they did a CT scan, and then waited for the results. One morning, he was in praying. I was holding on to the God. I said, God, I don't want cancer. I don't want to take no chemotherapy. I've seen what it does to people. I saw what it did to my mother. I saw I, 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 I did my brother. God, I, can, I don't believe I can handle it like him. So please don't, don't let me have to go through that. And the Lord delivered me from that. Amen. This morning, they had to do a bone scan three weeks ago. They did a complete bone scan. And I got the results back this morning. Clean bill of health. All right. Isn't that good news? I said, isn't that good news? All right. So I'm prepared to do what God has told me to do. And I want to share the, uh, the Jeremiah chapter 12, verse 1 through 5. We don't have much time. Here begins the reading of God's word. Righteous art thou, O Lord, when I plead with thee. Yet let me talk with thee of thy judgments. Wherefore doth the way of the wicked prosper? Wherefore are all they happy that deal very treacherously? Thou hast planted them, yea, have taken root. They grow, yea, they bring forth fruit. Thou art near in their mouth and far from their reins. But thou, O Lord, knowest me. Thou hast seen me and tried my heart toward thee. Pull them out like sheep for the slaughter and prepare them for the day of slaughter. How long shall the land mourn and the herbs of every field wither for the wickedness of them that dwell therein? The beasts are consumed and the birds because they said he shall not see our last end. Verse five. If thou hast run with the footmen and they have wearied thee, how canst thou contend with horses and if in the land of peace wherein thou trusted they weary thee and how wilt thou do in the swelling of joy give it to me in the NLT 
Hallelujah. Jeremiah chapter 12, 1 through 5, in the New and Living Translation. Lord, will you always give me justice when I bring a case before you? So let me bring this complaint. Why are the wicked so prosperous? Why are evil people so happy? You have planted them and they have taken root and prospered. Your name is on their lips, but your heart is far from their heart. But you're, but you're far from their hearts. But as for me, Lord, you know my heart. You see me and you test my thoughts. Drag these people away like sheep to be butchered. Set them aside to be slaughtered. How long must this land mourn? Even the grass in the fields has withered. The wild animals and birds have disappeared because of the evil in the land. For the people have said, the Lord doesn't see what's ahead of us. Verse 5. If racing against mere men make you tired, how will you race against horses? If you stumble and fall on open ground, what will you do in the thickets near the Jordan? So for the scripture. I want to preach to you as we close out this year on the subject in 2021. We're going to run with the horses. Somebody say in 20. Come on, talk back to me. Don't take, take the brakes off. Somebody say in 20. 20. 21. 21. We're going to run with the horses. We're going to run with the horses. Father, have your way in this place. It's in your book. It might sound foreign. It might sound different to them. But it's in your book. Meaning it has, it has plausible sense at most. Help us conceive and help us walk in this word. That it might be fulfilled in those that hear it today. As it go forth, let it not come back void. But let it accomplish what it's being sent to do. Even out there, those that have tuned in my Facebook. We give you thanks. We bind up the works of the enemy. No arguments. Not now. No, no, no conflict, no striving, not now. They will hear with us, says the living God. And be blessed. We give you thanks. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. amen. So listen, uh, I, as I said, I man, I, I was glad to be able to get back in that, that tux that I love that tux. I bought it some years ago. And I just wanted to wear it tonight. The Lord said, You can wear it when you come out. He said, but you're going to have to switch up because the truth of the matter is if you dress up, you almost are tone deaf to what's going on around you. Now, there's nothing wrong with dressing up. There's nothing wrong with, with, with projecting. But the reality is that there are people in hospitals, rooms, and in ICUs all around this country, all around the world, that don't know whether they're going to make it tomorrow. So there are a lot of people in the land that we live in, especially believers, who are frustrated. I mean, the level of frustration is beyond imagination. Just think about it. They said 20 million people aren't working. What does that mean? That means that there's no money coming in. That means that whatever they were doing prior to not working, that has been greatly impaired. Maybe there's, there, there, there's a there's a food shortage. Things that they normally took for granted, paying water bills and light bills. So the level of frustration is it's so thick. It's everywhere. You can't escape it. I don't care where you go. I was in airports. There's a level of frustration that we ain't never seen before. Why? Because we're, we're in a condition and a state that we ain't never been in before. Nothing like this, Joanne, has happened for 100 years. Powerful thing is that I know that my grandmother a hundred years ago was dealing with the, with the pandemic and she was able to get through it and if she got through it, good God Almighty, I intend to get through it too. Amen. If I have anybody in the building this evening that believe by faith, you're going to get through it. Open up your mouth and say, yes, Lord. Amen. Yes, Lord. So the level of frustration. An interesting thing about saints, when we get frustrated, how we act. You know, oftentimes it, when, 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 People that aren't saints get frustrated. They start cussing. Amen. 
throwing stuff, getting high and drinking. Amen. Walk with me, somebody. Mm -hmm. When people get frustrated, they, they turn to alternative things to, to ease the depression. Anybody hear what I'm saying? But when saints get frustrated with God, they have a different response. Sometimes when saints get frustrated with God, Bernadine, they don't praise as readily as they could. Walk with me, somebody. When saints get frustrated with God, sometimes, not always, their money is not given with joy and freely. They still give, but now they're not giving with, with, with the joy of the Lord that they should give. When saints get frustrated, their prayer life is affected. When saints get frustrated, they don't witness like they should. Or anybody talking to me again? Mm -hmm. so, so the level of frustration on saints is somewhat stifling. Why? Because it, it's, it's a challenge when you think that you should be somewhere and you're not. Do I have anybody here believe that they should be further along? Uh, yes, Lord. See, that's the thing about Christians, that, that oftentimes we, we wear these disguises and these masks about where we're at and where we want to be, and, and we know we're not where we want to be, but when we hear our, we, we hear our cue to shout, we don't shout. Because the frustration is so, so thick and so deep that we miss our point to shout. I'm saying to you once again, if the truth be told, all of us are dealing with a degree of frustration that's beyond imagination. And this is what the text begins to purport. In chapter 12, verse 1, the people are in captivity. Somebody say captivity. captivity. Mm -hmm. Just like us, there's some things that have us constrained and constricted time. I'm constrained and constricted by time. I can't do nothing about it. I got to wait just like you until the mark gets here. I can't make the mark up no faster than you can. Amen. So that means if I'm going through hell right now, guess what? I'm going to have to ride this storm out. There's some things I'm limited. There's some things I can't do. And in the text, the Bible says that they, they, they wanted to ask God a series of questions, but they didn't have the kind of relationship with God that they should. So they used Jeremiah. Something like we do. Pastor, can you pray for me? Sister, so-and-so, can you intercede for me? I need some help. I, I'm in trouble. So you call people that you believe got a relationship with God or believe that they have a better relationship than you have and you solicit their input and their prayers. And so Jeremiah was this kind of man. He was, But he, he, had, a, he had a difficult task because he was preaching to people who had God in their mouth but not in their hearts. It's hard to preach to people that shout hallelujah. And when they leave the church, they talk about you. It's hard to preach to people that say amen and then they don't follow through what they say amen to. So Jeremiah was preaching to a people that no matter what he said, they always did the opposite. By God, I guess he had to be frustrated too. That's why he called himself, or they called him the weeping prophet. So they tell Jeremiah, listen. We got some issues with God. Anybody ever had any issues with God? Anybody ever, ever think that God's, God's decision making was, that you had to question some of his decision? Come on now, now talk back to me. Have you ever, what God, why, why did you let me get evicted? Why did you allow me to be in a, a marriage that, that was so stifling, so immobilizing to me? Why would you let me stay there 30 years? Why would you let me stay there 20? Why would you let me stay with somebody that didn't treat me right? Why, God? Yes. Why would you let me stay on a job for 20 years? And watch people get promoted ahead of me that did not have the skill set or the qualification. Why? So they were frustrated. So I asked Jeremiah to go to God and they wanted to complain to God. They wanted to complain because like most of us, we want to complain because we think because what we do, we should be paid for it. We think because we did something right that God has a responsibility to, to sh make us shine before the world. That's the mentality of church people. It's a wrong thinking theology. We think if we do this, then God is supposed to do that. So most of us live very frustrated lives. We live in what we call quiet frustration or silent despair, where you don't hear no noise, but it's there. And so they asked God, they wanted to bring a complaint before God. And what they were saying was, hey, 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 hey wait a minute. We, we're looking at this thing. And there's something wrong with this picture. How is it 
that we supposed to be your people, but the wicked seem to be prospering. Walk with me, somebody. Mm -hmm. How is it that you pay your tithes, you come to church, you get on your knees, you do everything you're supposed to do, but somehow or another, ain't no cha-ching going in your bank account. This is what they say. Look at the text. Righteous art thou, O Lord, when I plead with thee. Yet let me talk with thee about thine. They're saying, God, the last two times I've come to you, it seemed like your decision making is a little off. Or it could be somebody. See, you have saints that will come to church with you, but you don't realize they envy and are jealous of you because it seems like you got more than they have. They won't tell you. They won't tell you that they envy you, and they won't tell you that they're frustrated with you, but it's there. And they asked Jeremiah, Jeremiah, go to God and talk to him. Tell God that we don't believe he made a good decision. That, that how is it that 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 little Wayne and and Puffy and all these guys are making all this money? How, how is it that Elton John and all these, how is it that Donald Trump, how is it that, that people that we think might be wicked, how are they soaring and prosperous and got everything, private jets, and here we are struggling. It's another fundamental question to ask God. If we are your people, why are we broke? Why are we dying? So many bishops from the Church of God in Christ, and I'm praying for them. Uh, a dear, faithful brother, one year younger than me, a Bishop Matthew with a dear colleague, go. There's some frustration in the church right now. There's some saints that have lost their job. They can't pay their bills. And guess what? The church that they've been giving money to for all the years can't help them out. There's a level of frustration so thick, so deep, that people don't know how. And so now they're questioning God. Do you know what you're doing? Come on, you're killing us. You're killing minorities. You ain't killing the rich people. They got all the back. They got everything. We're the ones that are hurting. That's the first question they ask God. Ask him. Does he know what he's doing? I, I, I know you have not asked God those questions like that because, because you dare not ask him. But, but if, if you were me, I'm telling you, there's been some times in my life I've had to ask God, what are you doing? What's going on here? I've been dealing with this too long. By now, it should be done. Amen, somebody. So the text goes on. It goes on to say, that, that watch this. See, see, everything was working right. Look at verse 2 in the, in the King James. Everything was perfect. They were planted. Remember, they were in captivity. And God said, if you go in captivity, I'm going to plant you. And when you're planted, you're going to blossom. He said, you're going to bring forth fruit. So the, all this was happening. But while it was happening, mother, out the corner of their peripheral, they saw their brothers and sisters extremely blessed, well beyond they were. And you got to be very careful that when you're going through your process that you keep your eyes open for other people and what they're doing. Amen. Because you don't know what season of life they might be in and what they're going through. Yes, yes. And we have, a, we have a bad habit of not appreciating the food that's on our table or the car that we drive or the people that's in our lives because we think somebody got something better. We're always looking at some gra somebody else's grass like it's greener on the other side. And said, so they said, hey, we're bringing forth fruit. We're planted. But watch this. Here was their problem. They had the right conversation with the wrong heart. So what are you saying, Pastor? It, it's like some of us today, when you, when you say hi to us, how you doing, brother? Oh, blessed and highly favored. Too blessed to be stressed. Have all the church jogging and like uh, uh, all that stuff down packed. They can recite it from one end of the spectrum to the other. But the problem is, is their hearts. I want to tell you something. In the next verse, he, he goes on to, 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 to say that you know me. You've seen me. You find my heart. And now a shift in their theology. They now want the people that they envy to die. Don't look at me like that. 
Have, have, has there anybody ever got on your nerves so much that you wish they disappeared? Oh, come on. <laughs> See, Joanne, we don't like to be honest. Uh, I, I was talking to a, a, a guy who was at the airport, and he was, boy, he was just mad at, at, his, at his partner. I said, he said, he said, you know what? Sometimes I think that when he's always on business trips, that when he go out of town, I hope that plane crashed. I said, oh, man. You'd be surprised what people think about other people that they wish they can get gone, they can just get rid of. They might not want to kill them, but they just don't want them in their life no more. Watch the, the text, watch this. These are believers. They said, God, watch this. They said, God, pull them out like sheep for the slaughter. Think about this now. They're covenant people of God. And they, their theology is, if I can't have it, nobody can have it. Walk with me, somebody. You got to, listen, you got to watch the people that you run with. Some people that you run with don't want you to be blessed. And one of the reasons why you're not blessed is because of the person you got around you. God will not bless you as long as they're there. So their theology is wrong. They said, listen, the only way that we're going to get blessed is if you kill them. Here was their first mistake. Can I show you their first mistake? Their first mistake was to assume that God will deliver your package to the wrong address. Do I have anybody in here that know that God knows where you at? Amen. You know what that Amen. means? That means that whatever God has for me, y'all ain't talking back to me. Listen, God knows exactly where you live. God knows exactly the city, the county, and he ain't giving your blessing to somebody else. That's the first problem. They had, a, they had a problem with their theology. They thought that somehow somebody was getting something that belonged to them. That was their problem. And so watch this. Instead of, instead of understanding the process, they said, God, kill them. The saints. The saints. One of the other problems that we have in this country is that we assume because sinners are sinners that God will judge this nation because of the terribleness of their sin. Check it out. The theology of this nation is that God will judge this nation based on what people in this nation do. Now, come on. Why would God judge me for somebody that can't do nothing but what he's doing? A sinner cannot do anything but sin. So God expects him to sin. So why would God judge me for somebody that can't change what he does? No, no, no. When God said he's going to judge the nation, what he's saying is, I'm going to judge the church. Because what's, he don't care what sinners do. He care what church folk do. Ain't nobody talking back to me. See, see, the problem is church folk are committing adultery. The problem is church folk is robbing God. The problem is church folk are doing some of the things that, that they're doing in the world they ain't got no business doing. They're doing it in the church. We do stuff that we ain't got no business doing. That's what he said. Your mouth is with me, but your heart isn't. So we have a character problem in the church. We have character flaws. We speak his name, but we, we fail to lack the substance to carry out the character portion. So he starts to minister to them. And then all of a sudden, God does a shift on them. He stops Jeremiah from talking, and now he starts speaking to Jeremiah. He starts speaking to Jeremiah. But let me, let, 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 let's go look at verse number five. Verse number five. He said, if thou hast run with the footmen and they weary thee, then how can, how can thou, then how can thou contend with horses? Anybody know anything about ancient Israel, ancient Rome? Whenever they got into major battles, they always sent in the foot soldiers. The foot soldiers Germany, always came in first. And there was a multiplicity with thousands, tens of thousands of foot soldiers. They were not the, the best trained. They were not the sharpest knife in the drawer, but there were so many of them. And their responsibility was to thin out the ranks. 
to lessen the people that they were going to attack. Do you hear what I'm saying? Their sole purpose was to intimidate and to cause the people that they were attacking to lose heart. Anybody hear what I'm saying? Yeah. And God begins to say to them, listen, if you can't deal with the footmen, how are you going to deal with the horses? What is he saying? He said, listen, things are bad, but they get ready to get worse. And, 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 and tonight, I'm saying to the people that are here and to all of you out there, if you can't handle the stuff that you're dealing with right now, you're in trouble because things are going to get worse. Mm. Things get worse. It's a known fact. They said the other day, I heard on the, on the, on the news, that there were 12,000 vaccines distributed throughout the country. Only 2 million have been vaccinated. They said at this pace, it will take 10 years to vaccinate this whole country, which means that every month, people are going to keep dying. Are you all listening to me? So God is telling them, hey, you're complaining about nothing. Because what's coming is worse. Oh God, I need somebody. I, 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 I said, I need you to hear me this, this evening. He said something is coming that is worse. And what, what are foot soldiers? Foot soldiers. What can we compare foot soldiers to? Uh, you know, some of the issues you got in your life. Not being able to pay a bill. Foot soldiers. Mm-hmm not getting promoted when you should have put soldiers. Children not acting right, complaining all the time, foot soldiers. When you go to work, they're cussing all the time and you're complaining, foot soldiers. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Wife won't give you none, foot soldiers. Husband won't give you none, foot soldiers. People don't respect you and treat you like you think you should be. Ain't nothing but foot soldiers. And all you're doing is complaining. Complain about this, complain about that, complain. Hey, ain't nothing but foot soldiers. And if you can't deal with the foot soldiers, how are you going to deal with the horses? My assignment tonight is tell you and me, we got to suck it up. And here, watch this. What you got to see, if God is sending, allowing multiplicity, multiplicity of foot soldiers to come at us, it's an indication that we're in the right, we on the right road. Somebody said I'm on the right road. On the right road. Listen, one thing that I've learned in my life, in my Christian experience, that whenever I get to a place where there's absolute turmoil and chaos, it means there's promotion on the way. Amen. Oh, come on. Y'all better talk to me. I, I don't know about you, but every time every time all hell has come loose, has, has all the hordes of hell have come loose, get me, guess what? Sooner or later, promotion was around the corner. You ought to give praise to God for your foot soldiers. Because your foot soldiers in education, the God is getting ready to take you to another place in him. I need Sherman to come out here for a minute. Come on. Do I have a witness in this building today? I said, you ought to give God praise when you got foot soldiers. Why? Because foot soldiers are an indication that you're on the right road. And what are the foot soldiers there for? They're to get you ready for the horses. <sighs> See, you're busy complaining instead of getting stronger. This period that we're going through of frustration, it is not to destroy it, it's to make us stronger. Yeah. It's to get us equipped for the running with the horses. I don't know about you, but when I got that clean bill of health, when the cat scan came back clean, when the bone scan came back clean, I said, thank you, Jesus. I'm getting ready to run with the horses. Do I have anybody in here this morning, this evening, that you realize all the hell that you've been through, all the people that have come out against you, all the mess that has attacked you this year. I lost my son this year. This year started out good, and all of a sudden, all hell broke loose. And God said, don't give up. Don't panic. Stay the course. Break through.
is on the way. Deliverance is on the way. Help is on the way. Open up your mouths and give God a praise. Open up your mouth and give God a praise that all the hell that you've been going through, it was never meant to kill you. It was meant to give you spiritual depth, substance of character. God didn't let you go through the stuff that you went through so he could destroy you, but he wants to make you stronger. Give somebody a measure high five and say, neighbor, oh neighbor, when the enemy came in, like a flood, I began to complain. And God said, suck it up. I'm trying to prepare you for a higher place in me. Somebody say yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 The year started off good, but then it got kind of shaky. Then the enemy stole my son. The devil thought that I was going to give up like some of you. But I give God praise because all he was prepared me for was to run with the horses. Thank God for my haters. Thank God for my enemy. Thank God for folk that talked about me. Thank God I can suck it up. I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. Yet he slay me, yet will I trust him. What you're going through, it is only preparation, baby. The hell you're going through, stop complaining. God is trying to prepare you to run with the horses. Do I have anybody in here? Now in the natural, you can't outrun a horse. But God told me to tell you, on this night, December 31st, he gonna take his super, put it on your natural, and you gonna begin to run with the horses. Somebody shout, yeah! Say yeah! You gonna be able to do what you couldn't do before. All you gotta do is get through this pandemic. I heard the Lord say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You got to know that this is the hour that God is looking for you and me to shine. Somebody say shine. Say yes. People won't treat you right. Ain't nothing but foot then. Kids don't call you. Don't send your birthday cards. You done gave them everything you got. You done given your life to the ministry and everybody forgot you. Ain't nothing but foot soldiers. Stop complaining. Stop murmuring. God is trying to take you higher than you've ever been before. And you can't deal with a few devils. How you gonna deal with a thousand members? I'm so thankful for my foot soldiers. Because when they first came, I thought they was going to kill me. But then I realized all they did was make me stronger. Do I have anybody in here? I'm glad for my haters. I'm glad for the people that don't treat me right. Why? I'm stronger. I'm more loving. I'm more powerful than I've ever been before. Why? God wants you to run with the horses. Put his super on my natural. I want you to get a good look at this church because you ain't gonna see this no more. When we when we transition over into 2021, it's gonna be a whole nother new ball game. Um, I said it's gonna be a new ball game. In the future, I have a building not made with hands. Somebody say yeah. I said in the future. God is going to straighten out everything. He's going to make your enemies your pursue. 
in the future, I said in the future, you will walk with God, you will walk beside him, yay, do I walk through the valleys in the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for the Lord my God is with me, I'm running with the horses, his rod and his staff, they comfort me, because I'm running with the horses, I'm not just speaking God, but I got him in my heart, he's not just in my mouth, but he's in my character, he's in the things that I do, because I'm running with the horses, do I have anybody here, it ain't about the foot soldiers no more, the foot soldiers couldn't kill me, they were there to prepare me for where I'm if he happens to bless somebody in my neighborhood who ain't no believer guess what I ain't gonna hate on him Amen. you wanna know why cause in Matthew 5 45 it says it rains on the just and the unjust so watch this if it starts raining in my neighborhood and my unjust neighbor starts getting overwhelmed with blessings I'm going to get in my sanctified clothes and I'm going to start giving God praise. I don't care if he is a devil because if God bless my neighbor, it means he's in the neighborhood. Do I have a witness in here? Right. I know your theology's all messed up that God don't bless sinners. Well, turn your TV on tonight. There's a whole lot of sinners with a whole lot of money doing a whole lot of things. You better get your theology right. If he bless the sinner, I'm next. Somebody open up their mouths and say your name. I'm next to get a program on the work that group. I'm next to get a new building. I'm next to get a choir of a hundred people. I'm next, I'm next, I'm next, I'm next, I'm next, I'm next, I'm next. Somebody say next. Why you think he went through all that hell? We don't go through hell just to be go through hell. That's right. You go through hell to prepare you for what's coming. The horses are coming. Brother, the horses are coming. Hey, God, God, God. You know what that means? I done got me some speed. I, I put these clothes on because when you got speed, you got to be able to maneuver yourself. You got to be able to get places that you can't get with the most cute, the most, the most real cute heels and the most real nice suits. You, there's a place you can't get in. But when you're ready, you're just like it. So that God takes you in tight places, you ain't got to worry about messing up your Sunday clothes. You're aware of where you're headed and where you're going. Somebody open up their mouth and say, neighbor, I'm running with the horses. Say it! The next time somebody wants to bring a complaint to you and, and to bend your ear about what's happening, say, hey, I ain't worried about no foot soldiers. I'm running with the horses. I ain't got time for your footmen complaints. I got places to go and people to see and land to cover. See, yeah, I prophesied in the name of Jesus. You gonna run with me. You're going to be right there with me. New house, new cars, new church members, new wives, new husbands. You're going to run right there with me. Somebody open up their mouths and said, I'm running with the horses. Say it! Yeah! Look, what's up ahead? The horses are coming. 
their complaints keep their complaints at an arm distance but they're complaining is because they're trapped by the foot soldiers and they don't see what's coming you and I have been able to make it through 10 months of this pandemic foot soldiers and they said something worse is coming you and I've got to make sure that we maintain these social distancings, you wear your mask, you sanitize, and you keep foreigners. And I'm not talking about people in other countries. I'm talking about people that you don't know where they've been. They can account for their whereabouts. Don't you let everybody touch you. I'm gonna say this again. Don't you let everybody touch you. You don't know what they got or what they could have gotten. Anybody hear what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I expect everybody to come to the service that we hear that you are practicing these practices and that I don't have to worry about you killing somebody in here. But get ready. Get your dancing shoes out. Come on, we're gonna exercise. We're gonna be in good shape this time next year. Somebody say amen. amen. I was, I was, the Lord told me yesterday, look on the internet. I was looking for trips to Israel. Why? Because we're running with the horses. I put a toll, 25 people going to travel with us to Israel. Why? Because we're running with the horses. The stagnation days are over. Those things that I've gone through, that we've gone through as a ministry, the pediatric ministry, they were not meant to kill us. They were only meant to make us strong. If you're frustrated, you're frustrated with the foot soldiers. Something worse is coming. It's almost that time. What we have left, Carla, to do? Just pray before that uh, countdown. Where are we at? Four minutes. How many? Four minutes. Get that for me, son. Thank you. Four minutes. Father, we give you great thanks. We bless your wonderful, glorious name for this place, this yeah. sacred space you've given yeah. us. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Ah, God, I'm so grateful Thank and honored you. that you gave me a clean bill of health before this year ended. I don't have to go into 2021 speculating whether or not my health is, is in decline. Thank you that I'm stronger than I've ever yeah. been. Thank you for my foot soldiers who've only given me an indication that greater is on the way. I pray for greater mentality and in terms of our, how, how we exercise our logic, our reason, that we do so with the idea, the thought, the knowledge, God, that, that you've given us an understanding, not just for now, but even for tomorrow, God. Give us grace for all that we have to face. We thank you. We on our knees. Thank you for, for what you brought us through. We thank you for the people that have come and gone and there are those that have been close to us that have left this planet God but we give you thanks we thank you for all our ups and our downs we thank you for our ins and our outs we thank you for all the trials and the frustration that we've experienced and we know God had it not been for those trials and frustrations we would not be able to know who you are we say hallelujah we say glory to God we say thank you Jesus for your goodness thank you for feeding us all year Thank you for clothing us all year. Thank you for protecting us all year. Thank you for being so good to us, better to us than we've been to ourselves. Thank you. And thank you. I'm stronger today. I'm running with the horses. My deacons are running with the horses. My leaders are running with the horses. Anybody in ministry can't be in ministry unless they're running with the horses. Thank you. That our prayer life has increased. Our giving has increased. I release blessings over this church, this body of believers. Even the sister Michelle who came through virtual. 
I pray for our increase of membership. The Lord told me it was going to increase 100 fold. 100 fold. When we come out this pandemic, God said in the first 180 days, you will increase 100 fold. Thank you right now. I prophesy for the increase. He said that we would not have any room in this building. There won't be any seats when this pandemic is all over. And all the trouble, all the challenge that you went through with these people, these difficult people. It was not to show you that nobody don't love you. It was to toughen you up for the horses. They disrespected you because you need to be toughened up for the horses. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. We bless you. We thank you. I honor you that I'm going to run. I'm going to run. And I ain't tired yet. Thank you for mother. Thank you for our seniors. Thank you for the support that we had all year, God. Now we give you thanks. We give you praise for bringing us over to 2021. We're almost there. I said we're almost there. We're almost there. We're there. We're almost there. We're there. We made it. We made it. Devil, you a liar. You thought I wouldn't make it. I made it. I made it.
And God, we, if there's anybody here or that out there in Facebook land that you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, we ask right now we take this moment as you you can become saved. All you do is have to say a few words. Say, Lord Jesus. Somebody say, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner, and I believe that you died for my sins. I believe because of your death. I have life eternally. Thank you, Jesus, for making me a part of the family of God. I will serve you the rest of my life in Jesus' name. If you said that prayer, you're saved on the first day of January, 2021. You have all the benefits that anybody in this church, I don't care how long they've been saved, you have every right that they have today. We thank you. And if you have gotten saved, send us a text. Send us an email. If you're looking to join a church virtually because you're not, you're not too, too sure about coming, you can join us virtually. Send us an email. We'll embrace you virtually. We'll announce it at the next meeting. Amen. All hearts and minds clear. Any announcements? Let's do our benediction for the first, first of the year. Amen. He has been tough. I ain't gonna tell you, it hasn't been tough, but it's been good too. The Lord is good, and his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Now unto him who is able to keep each of us from falling, he alone has the power to present each of us faultless in the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, to him be majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. And may the fellowship of the Holy Spirit remind you, if you can't deal with the foot soldiers, you'll never run with the horses. I'm thankful that you kept us for an extended period dealing with them old crazy foot soldiers. So when the horses come, we're winners. We give you thanks. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen.